Let's go backwards, right back to the beginning. 2008, the Indian Cricket League. What happened? And how did you first get immersed in this world of match fixing? Well, I left New Zealand, which was publicly stated, with some personal issues off the field. I won't hide behind that. I've always been hard on my sleeve. I've always been pretty open and honest. I looked at the ICL as a great way to a clean slate, get away from New Zealand, take the family and live overseas. And it was good money, you know, in this Rebel League. And we arrived there. And throughout my whole New Zealand cricketing career, we have edu- we have had the proper education in regards to, you know, bookie approaches and the dark side of the game. So that was already in place. I get to the ICL, I'm getting comfortable, starting to get excited about playing with a new team, and then you have the phone ring. Happens all the time when you're in India. Uh, and on the other line was on the other end of the phone was an Indian guy who wanted me to use his gear, his batting equipment. So I said, Yeah, I'll be interested. Cut a long story short, met him the next night in his hotel room. He came to the hotel and you walk into his room and it's happened before on other tours where all the gear is splayed across the, the hotel room and you go and pick up bits and pieces and then you negotiate a deal and there you go. Thank you very much. But when I arrived at the hotel room, there was nothing there apart from, you know, a young gentleman. And um, at the time I thought his wife, who was sitting on the end of the bed. and so She wasn't. No, no. The took, honey trap. The honey trap. It took about half an hour to realize that. I was still friendly uh, in conversation. And then when I asked again, where's the gear? He said, it's coming up with the concierge. I went to the bathroom. He puts his foot in the door. He goes, actually, that's a present from our business, our company. To you, she's a gift for you. What do you do at that moment? That's when the penny drops that this is, yeah, this is starting to look a bit dodgy. Uh, I declined. Next minute, he hands over a big wad of cash, 15 grand's worth of US dollars to my hand. said, well, this is down payment for our sponsorship for you. Uh, our business is for life. We will sponsor you for life. And that's when it was like, right, got to get out of the situation. Left the money with him. Um, the only way to, to leave the money with him was to put it in the safe with my code in his room. I straight away went down and spoke to my agent who was over from New Zealand at the time to help set up the ICL tournament, explained what had happened. Uh, and from, the, from there, the, the tournament directors were notified, I believed, and it was dealt with. I got sent back to the room to give the code on a piece of paper, slipped it underneath the hotel door without even knocking, gone. And as far as I'm concerned, that guy was dealt with thinking, wow, this has really happened to me. It's fine. I've heard stories of in the past of being approached, other players being approached, and and it's like, this is really happening. So then I go to my hero, knock on his door, and I'm buzzing with this, like, wow, this has really happened. I want to tell someone the story. And then I walk into the room, and, and then I couldn't, I had to just tell him straight away. I was like, this is just what's happened. I've just been approached and this is what I've done. I've reported it to my agent and it's all been taken care of. And then there was this eerily silence for a, a couple of seconds and then it's the, the deep breath. And I always remember the face looking over me saying, well, that's good. That's, that's good because that's a good cover because now you're working for me. And that's when my life changed. How did he have that power over you then? Well, I mean, when ex- explain to me, you've said no, you've reported it to your agent, it's now yeah. with the authorities, all of a sudden you're working for him. How and why? I couldn't say no. It's this this, this guy, this guy who's my hero, there's someone that almost took me under his wing. He was a dear friend and someone that when I was around, I was so empowered by his presence and his, his confidence and this, his aura of this legend that I'd had the honour of playing cricket um, with in my career and... And now it's, yes, sir. Can we just clarify this for the listeners? You cannot say his name for legal reasons, correct? That's correct. There's an investigation going on at the moment. At the moment, And as I've stated from last year, I am fully supportive of the procedures of any investigation. And I, I don't want to see at any point it being compromised. The disappointing thing was, you know, when I heard... This particular guy say that you know i was his friend and i took him under my wing you know yeah we were friends but he's not my friend anymore and he's certainly not my hero anymore 
do you hate him? No. No, I've learned to forgive. I think that is one of the most powerful tools of actually being able to deal with um, pain and stress in one's life. You've got to learn to accept bad things can happen. How are you going to deal with it? Accepting it, forgiving, and being able to move on. Look, Lou, as you say in your statement, depression is not an excuse. And I, I, I think what you said in your statement was very brave and very honest. But were you an easy target? Were you easy to be manipulated back in 2008? <laughs> My full story, I tell you what, I've, I've, I can look back on numerous occasions where I've been manipulated into some pretty awkward situations. And uh, yes, uh, people that know me know I'm vulnerable. They know I can be malle malleable. The New Zealand cricket team have even said that on the leading teams. You know, your 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 characteristic is, is you're malleable, malleable. You're easily strayed, and so it's out there. You know, listen, I, I'm a heart on the sleeve guy. I love trusting people, and it is my downfall. I trust people too early, too quick, and sometimes it and it has got me into trouble. If you had been stronger mentally back then, could you have resisted? That's yeah. Uh, uh, who I am today, and I'm a strong person now. I've gone through a journey to get to this point in my life where I can love life and I can love myself. And I would, back in that time of who I am now, it would be no. It'd be an easy no. Let's go backwards then. So he said to you, you were now working for him. When did you first fix a match then in the ICL? How much longer after that? particular conversation um, it would have been the next game it would, it would have been straight away there was four games during that tournament where it was fixed and he told you how to do that I was just given instructions it's pretty plain and simple you know we would be we'd have our discussions one-on-one -on -one, and I know of the, of a third person who was involved with those discussions um, but the directions and the instructions were very simple. As an opening batsman, you know, face 20 to 25 balls, 10 to 15 runs, and get out. Those were always, it was, it was always the same instructions for each game. That simple? Yep. How did the bookies know the fix was on? Well, we're working for this so, particular so, players. So, so they sorry. knew fundamentally that you would do X, Y, Z, and they could put the bet on, and they were yep. secure in the knowledge that you would meet that bet. Yeah, that's right. So whether that was... I personally, looking back, it's 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 a quite a complicated scenario to explain how sometimes fixing works, but it works in um, segments of the game and um, sessions of the game. So for 2020, you have two 10-over sessions, and for example, I'm playing against you. You're 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 paying two dollars for the win. Okay. Yeah. All right. So if if we're on the fix, um, and if you uh. And if I money's put on me and I'm paying at dollar fifty, uh, if money's being put on me, knowing that you're going to underperform, all of a sudden your um, your your odds go out to two dollars fifty or three dollars, four dollars, whatever. It depends on how bad you're playing. But then at a different point of the game where we know it's going to swap, and you're actually going to end up winning. You know, if you think of millions and millions of dollars that were put on, in, at that point where you're paying four dollars, wow. all of a sudden. Right, we know that that other team is going to underperform. What if you got out, win? though, after five or ten deliveries and the bet was you had to be in there for 20 to 25? What if you got that wrong? Because I know your ex-wife, Ali, has said in her allegations or her statement of facts, which was also leaked to the media, that you had cost your hero, as you call him, $250,000 US because you got the fix wrong. The last game of the tournament is where this, this, this really sort of fell over when I was supposed to get out and... I didn't get out and things unfolded and it looked so obvious that there was fixing going on. And when I was supposed to get out, I didn't get out. Why? Uh, because um, of the cricket gods. The ball I was supposed to miss, it hit some funny footmark and decided to spin into the middle of my bat, which went over the bowler's head for six. You're out there, because this happened with Herschel Gibbs as well. You remember mm. back in the day with Hansi Kron, yeah? So you're out there, and you know you have ruined the fix. You're going to have some unhappy bookies. What's going through your mind? You're out there in the middle of the pitch knowing you've cocked this up. Yeah, well, you've got to face up the next ball in 10 seconds, and the next ball went for four with an edge past the keeper. So 
all of a sudden 10, 10 runs have gone next to my name when I'm supposed to be yeah. out. What then did your so-called hero say to you after the game, knowing that you had ruined the fix? Yeah, it was more the the threat. I've been in the hotel room and there was three of us in the room and this guy grabbing his bat, pacing up and down the hotel room and then walking over to me with the, the bat above my head, just spitting and fuming, just literally holding the bat above my head, not following through, but threatening to hit was me. Was this the bookie or your hero? This is the this is the hero. This is the person I was working Is threatening for. you with a cricket bat? And said that I'd cost him not $250,000, they cost him millions. Did you fear for your safety at that point? Uh, I was broken. I was, all I could think about was, my God, I've let him down. He thinks I'm working for someone else behind his back. Um, the four, five, four games, five games, whatever it was that we've done to this point, you know, he owes me a lot of money. He owes me 200, 250,000 US, my, my boss, my the guy I'm working for, it's all gone. All this has been worth worth nothing. I've got myself into. I've disgraced the game. I've got myself. Allowed myself to to do these things to the game in front of crowds on TV with fellow Indian players who have given me an opportunity to to play cricket in India. It's all. It's horrendous. I'm sitting here just broken that I'm not going to get anything out of this, and I've sold my soul, and I'm a loser. It's amazing. You've got two young girls. Have they ever been threatened by the bookies? No. So your family's no. been safe. No, they, these bookies are very smooth. They 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 want you on their side. They'll do anything to make you feel comfortable with them. They'll always say, "Oh, how are your kids and your family and you know, this money you think about this will help them in the future all that sort of stuff." They, that's how people manipulate. They 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 pull on your heartstrings and and try and be friendly. 